Our Father and our God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Once again, we appreciate you because we know that all that we needed, your hands has provided. Things that we need for our future, things that we need to become who you want us to be, your hands has provided it. Lord, as we search the scripture, again this morning to understand part of the things that you have provided for us, Lord, we ask that you reveal it unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. More than ever before, Lord, you open the eyes of our understanding to know those things that you have provided for us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we ask that this morning you yourself will teach us your word. You will speak to us. You will touch our hearts. And you will release those things unto us that you have provided for our future, for the purpose with which you have created us. We pray, O oh Lord, that Daddy, all trans will be given this morning so that your voice will be heard in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer. For we pray with thanksgiving in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. All that I needed, thy hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, Let's have a seat in God's presence. Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Um, we are still in the season of our um, the quarterly season that we usually do. Um, spiritual fervency in ministry. Hallelujah. I just want us to dwell more on it for some of us who were opportune to be around for the prayer and fasting program and for some of us who were not around, I believe God wants to use another platform for us to speak to ourselves concerning this word. We are still in that season and we need to still enjoy the benefits of the season. There are great works that the Lord has provided for us and as we delve into it, to look at the richness of the blessing of the Lord for us, even in this season, the Lord will release unto us all that we need in the name of Jesus Christ. And the topic of today's administration says spiritual fervency. Hallelujah. Let's say it, spiritual fervency. Um. I want us to read the scripture together. We're just taking one verse and we're going to read it together. Let's open our Bible to the book of Romans. Let's stand up for the reading of the word of God, please. I'm sorry. Please, let's stand up. Romans chapter 12. We're reading just one verse and we're going to read it together. Romans chapter 12. Are we all there? Let's read the 11th verse. Romans chapter 12, verse 11. Are we ready? Want to go, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Three words. Again, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. May the Lord bless his word for the edification of our souls in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sit down. Thank you very much. Like I said, the topic today is spiritual fervency. Hallelujah. What is fervency? Fervency means to exhibit great intensity of force. Hallelujah. Fervency means to be passionate about what we do. Bible says not slothful 
in business. Fervency means to gather more strength, hard strength to whatever we do. Fervency means for us to concentrate and give passion to whatever God has put in our hands. Had more fire, had more power. Do more. Do more. Fervency. Hallelujah. To show a strong and energetic desire to get something done. That's fervency. They will say a fervent person is one who shows a very strong feeling of enthusiasm. Hallelujah. Who shows very strong feelings of eagerness. Who shows very strong feelings of interest in what God has committed into his hand. So our anchor scripture this morning said, it is not of us to be slothful in whatever God has committed into our hands. Be it your business, be it in your job, be it in the ministry, be it in your calling, be it even in the assignment that God has committed into your hands and my hands, Lord is saying to us that we cannot afford to be slothful. That we need to gather more strength to do more than what we have been doing. So this morning, God is speaking to you and I that there's a need for us to be more fervent in what he has committed into our hands. God requires that every believer should be fervent in their relationship with God first. So how is your relationship? How is my relationship? Thank God for the Sunday school that we had this morning. God is demanding our fervency even in our relationship with him. So when we are fervent in the relationship that we have with God, it will be very easy for us to be fervent in whatever endeavors that the Lord has committed into our hands. Hallelujah. The Bible says, see a man diligent in his business. Diligence is what God is expecting from you and I. But diligence don't come, effectiveness don't come when you don't know the business that God has put in your hand. Hallelujah. So we need to first of all identify with what is it, that business that God has committed into your hands and in my hands. That is when diligence can now be applied. But when we don't know the business that God has committed into our hands, we will be fervent in the wrong thing. We will be fervent in things that does not give glory to the Lord. You know, someone says, if you are running at 120, 130 kilometers per hour, if you are facing a wrong direction, no matter how you speed, you cannot get to your destination. So when you don't know that job, that assignment that God has created you for, there's no way you can be diligent. And it's until you are diligent that you can stand before God and you can stand before men and not me men. I pray this morning, power and the grace for us to understand that which the Lord has committed into our hands, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Galatians chapter 4, if you read from verse 18, the Bible says, But it is good to be zealously affected always in a good thing. The assignment that God has given to you and I, how zealous are we? In the area that God has called you into, are we not gradually fainting? Oh, I have been there for how long? Oh, since I, 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 I finished secondary school, I have been committed to service. At least I can give so much story about service. If I decide to just take a break for now, God will understand. God will never understand. 
Oh, I used to come very early before. They all know. They can attest to it. But now they should understand that, ah, I need to take it easy now. As far as God is concerned, God will never understand. Until you draw your last breath, you don't take a break in the things of God. So God is asking you and I this morning to reconsider how fervent we are in the things of the kingdom. For some of us, when we were young, we used to run up and down. We are always there. But now we are married. We are encumbered with a lot of things. Oh, God has given me a good job. Oh, I'm blessed. Now, I need to take things easy. God is saying, you still need to do more. That those things that he has given to you is to aid you to walk diligently, to be zealously affected concerning the good thing that God has committed into your hands. So how interested are you in the things that God has committed into your hands? Are you neither cold nor hot? God is saying there's a need for us to reappraise that which he has committed into our hands and check whether we are putting in more fire or our fire is gradually widening out. It's beginning to get cold. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. In that verse 19 of Galatians chapter 4, it said, My little children, of whom I traveled in birth again until Christ be formed in you. As we walk with God, is Christ being formed in us? Can people say of the truth that every day of your life you now resemble God better than how you carry God before? Can people say spiritually they can see growths? In your life. Or what they say is that we used to know that you were fervent at one time. But now we cannot say. Is Christ being formed in us? Is the character of Christ being seen in our lives? In that business that you are doing. In the job that you are doing. In your assignment to God. Can one say truly you carry the character of Christ in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation chapter 3 verse 4 says, And unto the angels of the church of Laodiceans, God saw these ones and he was able to realize that, Oh, you are neither cold nor hot anymore. But today God is asking, If I have the privilege to speak to you one on one, can God say, I'm actually hot? Can, can we say we're actually hot for Jesus? What will God say about you? What will God say about me? Our relationship with God, how is it? Can we say I'm getting better? Or I'm encumbered? The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. God wants us to be on fire for him at all times. Effectively fervent to the things of the kingdom. Constantly on fire for him. Hallelujah. So what God is demanding from you is spiritual fervency. The ability to sustain a higher level of spiritual intelligence. Hallelujah. The reason why we put our children to school is that so that they can become better. Abby? So when you are in the school of Jesus, you must become better in whatever it is that you do. Begin to gather more intelligence on how to do the work that God has committed into your hands better. Achieve more success than what you achieved last year. Appraising yourself and see that, oh, I did better than what I did last year. Not that they are going back to your record to see that you were once ought for God, but now we don't know. 
The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2, the Bible says, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. Upon who? A man that is fervent for the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord don't rest upon those who are cold. So when we want to carry the Spirit of the Lord wherever we go at all times, we must desire to be fervent for the Lord. We must be ready to do more than what we did the last time. More than what we did last year. More than what we did yesterday. We must be ready to be on fire for the Lord. He said, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel and of might. The spirit of knowledge and of the fear of God. So, for anyone who wants to be fathers, such man must operate in the spiritual discernment. Hallelujah. He must operate in godly wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Such man must operate in godly counsel. Hallelujah. Fervency allows you to be able to decipher if they are coming to tell you stories or they are trying to play with your intelligence. The Holy Spirit will have shown you that what they are saying is better you call that person and verify what this person is saying may not be the way it is. But because he has access to you, he can always lay the information the way it seems fit. But when you are fervent in the spirit, the spirit will tell you whether it is true or not. The Bible says, test and check all spirits. But when you are fervent, the Lord will have come and minister to you. Whatever the person is saying, he will tell you whether it is true or lie. That's the spirit of counsel. The Lord releases it to a man that is fervent in the spirit. I pray, power and the grace for us to be fervent in the spirit, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Fervency releases spiritual grace that allows us to discern and distinguish from the good, from, from, from good from bad. Hallelujah. He allows us to distinguish from lie and the truth. It allows us to distinguish from service to man and service unto God. You will know a man that is a God pleaser from men that are men pleaser. When you are spiritually fervent, you'll be able to identify all of this. Hallelujah. So God is demanding that we are fervent in the spirit. Because spiritual works are not done with the harms of flesh. People are there to push us, to make us make mistakes. And they will be the one to be the first to castigate us. I pray, power and the grace for us to remain fervent for the Lord. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. See, every time in life, we are open to suggestions. People come, they admonish us, they advise us. Even in what you do for the Lord, there are people that will tell you that, ah, you're the only one there. By now, you should have moved forward, you should have done this, you should have done that. Oh, you are bigger than that church. What you carry is much more than that church. God wants you to move forward. God wants you to take, uh, move, take, take a step forward in life. And they push you away. By the time things begin to move bad for you, it is that same people that will say he left his place of assignment. But when you're a fervent man, spiritually, you will know that God has a plan for you. Even when things look as if it's not it. But God is, see, is showing you something way better than what others are seeing. The power and the grace for us to live by faith and not by sight. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Power and the grace for us to stay glued to the assignment that God has given to us and remain fervent. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. When you are fervent in the spirit, we receive clear instruction with full clarity. You are not a man given to different, different winds of doctrine. When you are fervent in the spirit, you will know what God is saying part time. When, 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 you, when, you, when you find yourself in a garden where the word of God is going out, if you are fervent in the spirit, you'll be able to pick the ones 
that are from God, from the ones that are moved by men. Hallelujah. You know, the beautiful thing about the scripture is people can use it to suit their own gain. If the devil can use the scripture against Jesus to suit his own gain, that means no man, anybody can use the scripture to favor him. So, but when you have spiritual fervency, you are not carried away. You stay connected. You stay glued to the plan of God for your life. And as we begin to grow spiritually, the Lord will help us to stay connected to him in the name of Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 30 verse 21, the Bible says, And I hear shall hear a word behind thee, saying, This is the way. So when you are fervent in the spirit, the word of the Lord is always following you. When men want to turn you away from the plan of God for your life, the word of God will tell you, No son, that is not my word. Oh, though the man is quoting scripture, but that is not my word for you. Though the man understands scripture, but that is not my word for you. God will lead you. A fervent man is always being led by God. So this is the level where God wants us to operate. So that we are not caught with different, you know, diverse ways of ministry. And we begin to, oh, this is where it's raining now. Oh, this, no, 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 no. When you have God on the inside of you, you are, you are not moved by what is happening around you. God wants you to be fervent. God wants you to be fervent in the spirit. Your spiritual life is what God wants to deal with. God wants you to commit to it. No matter how busy you are, the first thing that God wants you to make and prioritize in your life is your spiritual connection with him. And when that is sorted, everything begins to align. I pray power and the grace for us to align to the plan of God for our lives. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Spiritual intelligence is largely dependent on how you yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. A lot of us, we find it difficult to yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Because sometimes, the Bible says, his ways are not our ways. Neither our thought is thought. So sometimes when God is ministering to us, we find it so difficult for us to yield to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. And that is why we need to stay connected continually to know what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to church at every given particular time. I, I, I appreciate what God uh, did in the scripture by giving the inspiration to write what happened in Acts chapter 10. Ideally, one would say, oh, for a man of God like Peter, by the time God speaks once, he will understand clearly. But if you read Acts chapter 10 in, in verse 1, that was a little bit. It was Colinius, a man who is a Roman, that God ministered to and told him, call a man by the name Peter. Send your boys to go and get him. He will teach you what to do. And this man yielded immediately to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. But here was our daddy in the law, Apostle Peter. In that same chapter, God was ministering to him. Now don't call those things that have sanctified as non-sanctified and he's saying not so Lord so when we are not connected sometimes we struggle with the instruction of God because sometimes it does not suit our hair because of the level of spirituality that we carry we find it difficult to check whether it is God that is speaking despite the fact that it looks like it does not match the standard of what God will say. And thank God, God had to reveal it over and over again for Apostle Peter to be able to catch the assignments. So when you are not fervent in the spirit, you may lose out from the plan of God for your life at all times. 
God may be saying something that will be beneficial to you, but because you cannot understand it, because you are not spiritually in tune with God, you let it go and we lose that benefit. I pray we will not lose the benefits from the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. And how is it that we will not lose that benefit? It is when we constantly maintain a high level of spiritual understanding with God. We cannot lean on the understanding of last year, of last month. We must constantly, constantly, constantly abreast ourselves with what God is saying per time. Why? How? By studying to make ourselves approved. A watchman that needed not to be afraid. Thoroughly dividing the word of truth. So that word of truth, we must continue to, di to, to, to divide it. The Bible says rightly dividing. So it is possible for you to divide the word of truth in error. That's why he's saying rightly. So when you don't divide it rightly, that means you can understand it in error. I pray we will not live in error in the name of Jesus Christ. But when we are not fervent in the spirits, every word that comes to us begins to throw us up and down and we will not be able to maintain our stand in Christ Jesus. The power and the grace for us to be able to maintain our stand in Christ Jesus, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are ways to maintain fervency in the spirit. But because of our time, I will limit it. Number one is our spiritual life. We need to invest more in our spiritual life. Number two, we need to be diligently abreast of God. How? By studying the word of God at all times. Your temple, your altar is not something you visit once in a while. It has to be a constant routine. Hallelujah. How do we maintain spiritual fervency? By not plugging to vanity. Don't plug into vanity. Things of the world will go with the world. We need job, I know. We need to live our life, I know. We need to create means of having shelter, clothing and food. But it must not be at the expense of our spiritual life. So when you plug into the cares of this world, you can never be fervent in the spirit. So you can't afford to plug into spiritual vanity. And we must be committed to service if truly we want to be fervent in the spirit. That's why I said not slothful in business. Fervent in the spirit. Serving the law. In the place of service, the law gives you opportunity to know the mind of Christ. A man was saying something. He said sometimes when you don't feel like praying, you don't have the hodge to pray. He said the best thing for you is find yourself among brethren who are praying. The Bible says iron sharpeneth iron. By the time you get there and you are not in the mood to pray, by the time you see people firing prayer, their grace will rub off on you. And you, before you know it, you too you are praying. When you don't feel like studying the Bible, get any of the sermons and play. Bible says faith cometh by hearing, hearing the word of God. By the time you are listening to the word of God, the spirit of the Lord will come in and stir you up. But when we feel that, oh, I'm not in the mood to pray. I'm not in the mood to read scriptures. And we stay like that. Our fire becomes to go down. And that is the plan of the devil for us. So we cannot afford to live our life that way. We all carry big phones now, Android and all of that. How many sermons are in your phone? That you can just say, oh, I'm in a bus. Let me just connect my earpiece and listen to someone. Even if I cannot read my Bible because of the noise around me. You know, there was a time pastor was saying that sometimes when he's busy, that he's moving 
from one location to another that he has a Bible cassette. When he feels like reading the Bible and he's probably driving, he plugs it in. What are the things you have around you that will keep you fervent? When others are listening to the things of the world, what are the things you're listening to that keeps you fervent? Everybody now, you see them with phone, TikTok, all these. But why they are doing that, what are you doing to remain fervent in the spirit? These are the things that God is asking. Everything has been made available. But until we plug in, we cannot enjoy the grace that God has made available to us. The Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. We need to be a praying Christian. I may not be able to delve into those four things. Don't unplug to vanity. You know, read the word, commit to service, pray. But I want to take that prayer. Prayer is key. Bible says, a prayerless Christian. I don't know. That, maybe it's an adage. Is a powerless Christian. And the truth is this, the opposite of prayer is not prayerlessness. So the opposite of prayer is fainting. When you don't pray, you begin to faint. No prayer, no power. No prayer, no fire. No prayer, no grace. No prayer, you cannot rule. God wants us to constantly be in mode of prayer at all times. Some people do prayer work. Some people, while they are moving, they are speaking in the spirits. We must know all of these things because these are the things that the worldly people are doing. When you see them moving around, is it that they are listening to music? People don't walk idle anymore. So if the people of the world don't walk idle anymore, what are the people of God, the kingdom, partakers, what are they doing at their leisure time? When you are walking and there is air peace in your ear, are you listening to the song of God? Are you listening to sermon? Are you committed to the things of God? God is asking that these are the things that can make us to be more fervent in the spirit. The things we feed our body with should not be more than what we feed our spirit with. And that's the only way we can become fervent in the spirit. The power and the grace for us to continually be fervent in the spirit, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. You know, in 1 Thessalonians, Chapter 5, verse 19, the Bible says, quench not the spirit. So you can't afford to toil with your spirit level with God. You must take a conscious, conscious effort. You must be intentional about your fervency in the spirit. It's not just something that just happened. No. You must ask yourself, what are the things I need to do? That's the season where we are now. And we need to ask ourselves, what are the things I'm going to be doing differently? What are the things I'm going to add to my daily routine to make me more fervent in the spirit? How many minutes do I listen to the word of God after the mixed LR? Is that the end? Do I have more tapes, more sermons on my phone? YouTube is there. You can download a lot of things and it will be on your phone. You can always hear it over and over again. How fervent are we in the spirit? Especially the things of the spirit. When we are not fervent, there's no way we can serve the Lord fervently. That's why the Bible says, number one, don't be slothful. Number two, be fervent. Then it will guarantee true service unto the Lord. So when you are slothful and you are not fervent in the spirit, there's no way you can give true and godly service unto the Lord. And God is looking for worshippers that will worship him in truth and in spirit. So our spiritual life has a key role to play. 
in whatever it is that we are able to achieve or become before God. I pray the power and the grace that we will check our life and begin to put the things that will glorify God, the things that will make us connected to God more than the things that are just mundane in our life. The power and the grace for us to set those things that will glorify God more than the things that are mundane, the Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want us to take some prayers before we end the service. You know, while I was studying, I realized that three things are the things we need to fight. The Bible says fight a good fight of faith. We need to fight. Fight to stand still before spiritual things can be easy for us to do. And what are those things? Number one, lust of the flesh. The case of this war. Oh, I have a minimum standard of the things that must happen to me. So when I don't get those things, no, church can stay until I'm able to get those things. Number two, lost of the highs. Hallelujah. Number three, pride of life. If we are able to handle those three things, it will, our spiritual journey will be very, very easy. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2 verse 16. The Bible says, for all that is in the world, these are the things that, that depict the world. That is what is in the world. He said, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, that is what rules the world. The lust of the highs rules the world and the pride of life. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't, I can't, you know, I'm a graduate now. I'm a master degree holder. No, if I don't have this, no, 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 I can't have time for that. Pride of life. And that takes us away from God. Oh, I have a good job now. Uh, they know now. I used to serve them now, but they should understand. They know the nature of my work now. The pride of life. And we begin to make people understand. Okay, we understand, sir. But does, does God understand? Three things. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the eyes. And the pride of life. When you're able to deal with those things, to walk circumspectly on spiritual matters will be very easy. Out of these three are the things that were told to us in Galatians chapter 5 from verse 10. Hallelujah. When God was talking about uh, adultery, fornication, you know, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, and by the time you group them, they are within these three groups. The lust of the flesh. The lust of the heart and the pride of life. Power and the grace for us to be able to destroy these three things that is working against us in this world. The Lord will grant unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's rise to our feet. Hallelujah. You know, in Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18, the Bible says, for when they speak great swelling, for when they speak great swelling, words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness. Those that were clean escaped from them who lived in hell. Lord, I will not live in hell. I want us to say that. Lord, I will not live in hell. Bible says there's a way that seemeth right in the face of a man, but he said the end thereof is a way of destruction. Lord, help me not to live in hell. You know, when you begin to justify what you do, you are beginning to live in hell. Oh, God understands. What do you want me to do now? I just got this job. Do you want them to sack me? 
Lord, help me not to live in error. Help my spirit man to live circumspectly. Help me to be diligent in service. Lord, I will not live in error in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's turn it to God in prayer. Lord, I refuse to live in error. Lord, cleanse me by your word. I refuse to live in error in the name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it said, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strengths. Lord, I receive renewal of strengths in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I receive renewal of strengths in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, They will mount up with wings as eagles. I receive grace to mount up with wings as eagles in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I receive renewal of strength in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's turn it to God in prayer. In the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's tell God, Lord, I mount up in the wings of the Holy Spirit. I run in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And I walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Can we say, Lord, I mount up with the wings of the Holy Spirit. I run in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And I walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's say it one more time. I, I, I mount up in the wings of the Holy Spirit. I run in the strength of the Holy Spirit. And I walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's declare that to the Lord. Lord, I'm walking in power. Lord, I mount up with the wings of the Holy Spirit. Lord, you know, he said they shall run and not be weary. Lord, I run in the strength of the Holy Spirit. Uh, you said we will walk and not faint. Lord, I walk in the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, until I become fervent in the Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I mount up in the wings of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I run in the strength of of the Holy Ghost. Lord, I walk in the power of the Holy Ghost until I'm fervent in the Spirit. So shall it be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you. Lord, we give you all the praise. Forever we praise you. Forever we give you all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer in the mighty name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ.